Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. I am your host, Allison, and this is my podcast where I chat about knitting, yarn, and apparently now cross-stitch because I'm obsessed. Um, this is episode, I believe, 69, and it is March 1st, 2021, and I have so much content for you guys today. Please excuse the wet hair. I did just go for a run um, and trying to get back into the swing of just moving my body, getting out of this slump, this work from home, being stuck in, home, in the home slump. Um, we've had gorgeous weather for the last couple of days compared to what we've had. We were like negative 20 to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit for a while. Snow kept continuously dumping on us, and so when I say we have gorgeous weather, it means the sun is shining and it's like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Huge difference. Um, so I definitely had to get outside and move my body and just soak up some some sun, get some vitamin D in my life. Um, so yes, I'm sorry, I showered and now my hair is still wet, but I wanted to sit down and get this podcast recorded while I was still thinking about it and while I still had all of the things around me to share with you. So we're just gonna hop right in. Um, let's see, I have notes because like I said, there's a lot of content. I have a finished knitting object. I have a finished cross stitch object and I have a few works in progress knitting wise, a few starts on cross stitch or maybe um, updates, I guess. You might have seen a couple of them last time. Um, a little bit of haul, lots of fabric haul, really. A little bit of knitting haul. Um, what else? Uh, some things I'm dreaming about either knitting or cross-stitching. Some things that are on my list and up on the horizon somewhere. I'm going to do a few shout-outs of new channels that I found, new to me channels that I've really been enjoying recently. Um, and then just a little bit of chat. I also wanted to mention that there is a little bit of shop announcement, but I'll save that for later or hold a giveaway here on this episode because why not? Um, I needed a pick me up. I'm sure there are many people out there that need to pick me up and you know what? We're just going to give some stuff away. More details on that later in the episode. Uh, but first the elephant in the room, you can't really see a lot of it. I will insert some video. Uh, of me kind of moving around in it so you can see it better. But I finished my Portage cardigan, you guys. I'm so excited. Uh, my Portage cardigan is something that has been on the needles for quite a while. It has an interesting backstory. Um, a viewer of the podcast uh, had noticed that quite a while ago I was talking about wanting a Portage cardigan and just knowing that the patterning panel on the back I just could not, I would never bring myself to actually do, to knit. Um, and so they had reached out and said, I knit it, but I can't bring myself to pick up for the sleeves and the massive button band that goes, shawl collar that goes around it. They said, if you're interested, it would be the same size that you're thinking of making. Um, I will send it to you. You can save the project. Uh, and finish it off if you would like. And I said, you know what? I think I can handle a button band and sleeves. So yes, I would be honored to take your languishing project and finish it up. Um, she so kindly sent everything, including the part of the pattern I would need, so I didn't have to repurchase the pattern, although I believe I'm going to just go ahead and purchase a copy of the pattern just to support the designer. Um, but she sent that along and all of the yarn that I would need and I, which reminds me, I was going to weigh this. I will do that and then put it on the screen to see how much uh, yarn this used because I had no idea how many skeins of yarn she had used prior to sending it to me. All I knew was that she had sent a ton with and I went through a ton of it. So I'm gonna weigh it, I'm gonna find out the final yardage um, or the final grams of the, the full sweater cardigan. Um, yeah, and I will, like I said, put that on the screen. I'll put it on the Ravelry Project page. But for all intents and purposes, it is completed. I didn't block it. I had heard that it does grow quite a bit um, and stretch out if you wet block it. So I didn't want to do that because when I tried it on when it was finished, 
I was really happy with where it sat um, and kind of where the hem came to and things like that. So I didn't want to attempt blocking it and then having it stretch. I like where the sleeves are. So you can see here, I did change up the pattern a bit. I did my own decreases on the arms just because I like bigger, uh, more comfy sleeves. And I added some thumb holes right before I started. Uh, let's see, they're kind of wonky on here, but right before I started working the cuff, I did add some thumb holes where I just bound off for like eight or nine to 10 stitches, uh, continued working in the round, and then when I came back, I just added back on, I think maybe eight stitches, like two less or something. Um, and yeah, I just created a little thumb hole. I did make the cuffs extra long because I knew I would likely be wearing them like this and I wanted them to cover the majority of my hands, but also I love that I can roll them and have about an inch here of a rolled cuff. Um, or you know what, if I don't want my hands in, I will likely just roll them and pull them up. Um, this is amazing. It fits perfect. I am in love with it. The pockets were interesting. I've never made pockets on a garment before. And I will say I have short arms compared to like the rest of my body proportions. My arms are shorter than like everything else. Um, so when it's on, I can I cannot put my arms down and reach the bottom of the pockets, but that's fine. That's because when I put my arms down, they like go to weird, they don't go down as far as I see normal people's arm lengths going, if that makes any sense. Um, and I have a very long torso. So long torso, short arms, I just can't win. Um, but I can still get my hands in the pockets. They just, I have to stretch a little bit to find the bottoms. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really, really happy with this. It's very cozy. The yarn is Knit Picks DK, City Tweed DK. Um, and it is the Tahitian Pearl colorway. So it's their tweed, you get all these tweedy nips, and it's this really pretty gray. It's coming across a little bit tan um, just because of my lighting in here and the setup that I've got going on, um, but it is just a really pretty gray. So yeah, I'll turn and check the back. And like I said, I will have put some footage of me standing in it so you can see and then I also will have some pictures that I plan on posting uh, over on Instagram and the project page for this. But yes, my Portage cardigan, highly recommend the pattern. Um, obviously I can't say that in complete entirety because I did not knit <laughs> the body of this beast, um, but the parts that I did knit I enjoyed. It's just plain stockinette sleeves. Um, and then you got this garter ridge panel that goes all the way around so it's, it does uh, fold and curl a little bit and it's just very, it's very cozy. I did not put buttons on it, I don't plan to. I will just leave it as an open cardigan um, just to check on if I'm um, working or running about the house or if I just need, you know, a lightweight sweater like when it's 40 degrees outside. Uh, just to toss on. I have a feeling this is going to get a ton, a ton of wear, and I am very happy and very pleased with it. The next project that I finished was actually a brand new purchase, um, I believe since I recorded last, um, but I really wanted to make something for mine and my husband's upcoming wedding anniversary, and that's at the end of March. So. I had seen on another uh, floss tube about the hand and heart collector's hearts. And so I thought, you know what, that's really, that's a really cute idea to make, whip one of these up really quickly, um, put it in a really cute frame, and then just have a nice little keepsake for, I don't know, on our dresser, or he can take it, I don't know, I doubt he'll take it to work, but, uh, put it on his desk or something like that. So um, I was looking through the collector's hearts from Heart in Hand 
and I ended up finding this one um, which I really liked the design of. So it says grow old along with me, the best is yet to be, but this is 2017's. Um, our, we got married in 2012 and I wasn't a huge fan of the 2012 chart so I was like you know what I'll just get the one I like and then I'll fudge the date. So um, that is exactly what I did and here is the finished piece. It's all complete. The beads are on it. Um, I've ironed it. I just need to get it finished up and find a frame for it. So I am pretty dang pleased with myself. Um, first time adding beads to anything so you can see that there's some beads here on the heart um, as well as this larger heart bead here. Um, and then like I said, I put 2012 on there instead of 2017. So yeah, it'll be our ninth anniversary and unfortunately um, nine is not linen. I was really hoping it was going to work out and I'd be like, ha, see I did it. Traditionally uh, the gift is supposed to be linen, but <clears throat> I think, I cannot remember, it might be clay or something like that, but I'm like, eh, it's fine. Um, so yeah, I don't know if he's going to be like over the moon. He'll probably think it's pretty cool because he thinks that all of my cross stitching is pretty cool, but I don't, I hope he sees like the sentiment behind it. But you know, he's a guy, so he'd probably be like, oh, thanks honey. That's cute. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I like it and I'm very happy that, um, I have it and I'll, we'll have it in a frame and yeah, I'll just, I'll be able to remember it. I do think I want to go back and maybe initial it um, and maybe add like the date, the year that I, I made it. I've seen a lot of people are um, initialing and dating their cross stitch pro projects. So I think I might go back in and do that before I put it in the frame. But otherwise for all intents and purposes, I keep saying that, but otherwise it is is complete um, and I will likely take photos of it before I um, gift it to him just so I can have a picture of it in the frame and everything for the social medias which I failed to mention if you'd like to follow me on social media you can do so uh, on Instagram and Facebook I am lofty loops over on Instagram and the lofty loops nope Lofty Loops Hand Dyed Yarns over on Facebook. Um, links to all of that can be found in the description box below. So um, much more active on Instagram, but um, the majority of stuff that gets posted to Instagram also gets posted to Facebook. So whatever, pick your poison. Um, I watch them both and respond to comments um, and like on both. So whatever works best for you. Um, let me grab got my little uh, cross stitch journal here. I was going to see, I wrote down where I got that, uh, the heart and hand kit from and when I started it. So, oh, I did buy it. I found it at Fat Quarter Shop and the DMC is, it did not come with the called for thread. So I just did a DMC conversion, which they give you in the chart that I just picked up at Michael's. Um, yeah, I started it on February 10th and finished it on the 19th. So it was a very quick, quick thing to whip up and I'm really, really happy with it. Let's see if we jump back to what I've been working on. I will share a couple smaller projects that have seen a little bit um, of an update since I was really focused on getting the portage uh, complete, but I can't just sit and work on one thing all the time. I am like a serial starter and cast on itis is a thing and I bounce from project to project a lot. Um, as you will know about me if you are a previous viewer. Um, but one thing that I did jump back to over the last couple weeks was uh, a sock. And this sock was my, I believe it was my Christmas Eve, nope. Christmas Day cast on. I think I cast it on a Christmas Day. 
The yarn is the full skein that I received in the Corner of Craft uh, advent calendar this past year. Um, it's very pretty. I forget the name. I don't think I wrote it down either. Um, I'll, of course, put it on the screen and it'll be down below in the description. But I decided to cast this on because I really wanted to work up a sock with some of my advent yarn. Um, and I am using the Morning Coffee Socks. Uh, a pattern by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. I have knit this pattern before and I really enjoyed it. It's really easy to memorize, um, really fun to do. It's just a series of knits and pearls to make this really nice texture that I think is really fun. Um, you can still see the texture with um, all the variegation in the yarn and then it makes it extra stretchy too uh, because it's almost like a three by one rib with some added stuff in there so it makes it nice and nice and cozy and squishy. Um, I've got a corner of craft little marker on there that is my rainbow sheep that I picked up from Hannah. Um, last night I finished the heel flap and turned the heel turn and so then I started picking up gusset stitches when I just like I could not anymore I had to go to sleep. Um, so following the patterns uh, slip stitch heel flap and gusset for this I originally was thinking about switching um, and using um, a contrasting mini but then I forgot and I just kept working so it is what it is. Um, here it is the cake and again uh, oh, I do have the band it is Lathander's Mold Red um, on Hannah's Sturdy Sock Base so it is 75% Blue Face Luster 25% Nylon and again this was day 25 of her advent calendar from 2020 so yes I love it I love Hannah's yarns I just love Hannah as a human being in general, um, but her yarns are all Dungeons and Dragons inspired colorways. So if you're not familiar with her, I highly recommend go checking her out. Go check out her uh, YouTube channel. She posts three times a week now. She's doing um, daily vlogs and uh, shop vlogs and then typical podcast, but yes, she is just a great person she's very fun to watch um, and yeah I've enjoyed getting to know her I've got it in this cute little bag from oh my gosh knit one and sew two it's a little bento bag type and then I've got my crazy sock lady summer sock camp enamel pin on there because you have to have a summer sock camp pin on a sock sack right So that's got a little bit of work. Um, I'm pretty pleased actually where I just kind of decided like, hey, let's let's continue working on this sock because I had maybe a couple inches into the cuff done um, and really was just like, I have no reason to not continue working on this beautiful sock. So the other knitting project, I can't remember if I shared it last time or not, um, or maybe, you know what? I think I just shared the idea of it last time which has changed since I talked about it. Uh, this, it's very jingly. I've got lots of stitch markers hanging on there. Oops, that's the back. Let me show you the front. This is the Marvelous Wrap, uh, which is a pattern by Knit Graffiti. And I am using a few different colors um, from a few, a couple different dyers. So this, um, Neutral up here is a skein from Sweet Sparrow Yarns and it came in her foraging, one of her foraging clubs from 2020. Um, that is a club where uh, Julie dyes up colorways based on foraging, foraging in the woods, her walks outside. She lives in a very, um, very pretty place with just lots of nature walks. She does a lot of nature walking um, and foraging, I believe. So I hopped in and grabbed that club, and this was, ooh, Oyster Mushroom. So it's just a very 
pretty neutral with lots of really delicate speckles in there that are also just neutral colored speckles um, some browns and greens and maybe really subtle blues but they're just really lovely um, and then originally I had this mini skein set from a homespun house um, and I was originally going to knit one of her mystery knit alongs from this last advent season but then I saw the marvelous wrap and that's been on my uh, list of things that I wanted to knit now for quite a while so it's like you know what let's just make this up as we go so that full skein from Julie is my main colorway but then throughout I will be kind of striping in or not striping but color blocking in these minis from a homespun house um because they all, here's the one that's currently being worked right now. They all just really, I thought, went really nicely with that main colorway. Um, so yeah, those the speckles in here kind of bring out different tones and colors that are in these. Um, also, there's some pinks and mauves in there, so you know, uh, that's me. <laughs> uh, but it is a really pretty brioche shawl um, you start out with <clears throat> up here with a little tab and then it kind of it will you'll increase um, you do these little medallions and garter and then this beautiful brioche The universe apparently does not want me to record um, a podcast today. On the plus side, my hair has now almost dried, so there's that. Um, but where was I? I was talking about my Mobilis. Um So I'm about, I believe, halfway through. I've started the second repeat on the brioche, um, so I will repeat all of this again. And I've swapped out, um, I've worked my way through the first mini, and then, as you can see, um, swapped in the next one. So it was this really almost denim blue with lots of different speckles, um, and then more of like a gold color. So I'm just grabbing a mini from the set, winding it up, and then adding it in. So I think it's so far really nice all together right, let's see as far as cross stitch works in progress i have a few um i don't think any of these are new i believe i've shared all these before um they are all in hoops and things so i'll take this out real quick um this is one that's super fun. I actually got this with the intention of gifting it to um, my friend and she just had a birthday, but obviously it's not gonna be done for her birthday because um, her birthday's passed, but <laughs> um, it is close. So this is oh, Cross Stitch Lovers and this is their recipe for today. Um, so I am working through, there's this really pretty curved floral motif here, and then it'll be here on this side as well. Um, but it will say recipe for today, one cup of cluster, two cups of fuck. Um, and I just thought it would bring her a lot of joy to hang up at her work desk, um, because she's working from home and I know she's been having a hard time too, so... Um, as soon as I saw the pattern, I thought of her, so, or the chart. Um, I've got my Woolwich Needle Minder from Shelly Can on here. Oops, I just turned it upside down. And I think I am knitting this on, I think, 28 count Monaco. Look at me knowing what all these things are.
I didn't write it down, but I'm pretty certain it's uh, 28 count Monaco uh, that I just picked up from Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. Um, the DMC is a conversion to what I had on hand, um, so it's not exactly called for, but it is close. Um, I think they're only a couple, a couple off on the greens um, and maybe some of the pinks were just a couple off of what it was called for, but I wanted to use what I had on hand. Nothing much else to say about it. I really enjoy it. Um, I think, I think she'll get a huge kick out of it when it's all said and done. Um, this cross stitch has been seeing a lot of work because I think it's adorable and I literally just can't stop. Um, that's all chart. Okay. Um, but it is Hello Pumpkin by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And I have, since I last, um, I don't, I think I just barely had the little owl space and a few of the leaves. Um, the last time I shared this, so I have since finished off his body um, and worked my way through a lot of the leaves. This is going to be an apple up here. Um, this is like a little flower thing that's coming along, but I just think it's too cute. And this is on 14 Count Ada. I bought the kit from Caterpillar Cross Stitch as well as the kit for Hello Deer, which is their winter themed um, tree and the kit i think it defaulted to come with 14 count ada or else that's what i chose i don't remember either way it's on 14 count ada um and then i got the little needle minder it doesn't want to focus but there we go um yeah so this is coming along i am loving the colors in this i realize falls over we're moving into spring but this is like my color palette with a little less orange um, I just I love all these muted purples and blues and pink and red I just I love it I'm really enjoying this project um, I wanted to get a good amount of work put in on this because I well so the other two trees are coming out this year so there is a hello petal for spring and I always forget what summer is um, but spring should be coming out here in the next few weeks I believe is what I've been hearing um, obviously I'm not in any rush to finish any of these but it would be nice to not get so far behind that maybe I have one or two done by the time spring and summer rolls around and I'm ready to work on those um, but I'm just enjoying the process and not putting any pressure on myself I should also mention that I know that uh, March Madness is happening and there are a few other things going on in the cross stitch floss tube world, but I'm not committing myself to any of that because one, I think I'm really new to the whole cross stitch floss tube world. Um, so I'm slightly overwhelmed um, and intimidated by something like that but also something that I'm getting in my haul is starting in mid-March and so I don't want to make any promises to work on anything else because I've joined my first stitch along um, and that obviously is going to take priority in my world um, to try to keep up with that as much as I can so that being said I'm just trying to work on whatever's calling to me at the moment in the moment if it's knitting on a sock or that shawl, or maybe it's working on some more Hello Pumpkin, whatever it is, um, I'm just grabbing it, no rhyme or reason. Um, and then the last thing that I have currently on on the hoop, instead of on the needles, um, is a, oh, my Animal Almanac. And this is in a project bag from Molly Klein Design. It's really pretty Rifle Paper Co fabric. Um, this is, oh my goodness, so let me take it out of the hoop. I have heard that you're supposed to take them out of the hoop if you're not actively working on them just to minimize all of the creases that you get um, in the fabric, but 
sometimes I forget. Uh, but this is being worked on 32 count Belfast linen um, in the country mocha colorway I believe is what came in the kit. This is a kit from Frosted Pumpkin Citry and um, I have finished the first block which is the cute little penguin um, and I have started working on the second block. This was originally a stitch along um, I think maybe from last year or the year before, so I think it was last year's. So I'm just working them just for fun as I go. Um, I've got a stitch marker from uh, a needle runs through it, or not a stitch marker, a needle minder. <laughs> needle minder from a needle runs through it. Um, and yeah, just again, enjoying the process. Really, I just, I don't, I think he's so cute. I'm using all of the called for flosses because again, I purchased the full kit from Frosted Pumpkins. Um, and yeah, there's a lot. I've got them all kitted up here on floss tags. Um, there's a lot of floss. Lots of colors in this thing. It's kind of scraggly. It's a mess. I'm trying to decide if I like this organizational tactic or if maybe I want to try bobbins instead. They do get kind of scraggly and they kind of make me feel like it's tangled hair and it kind of gives me the, I don't know, feel like I need to brush it. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that. There's something else. I swear I worked on something else. Maybe I didn't. I knew that there was something else that I was missing. Um, I created my own needle minders from pins that came in my Owl Crate subscription box. So I've been subscribing to Owl Crate now for a while. It's a young adult fantasy box where you get a book and you get a whole bunch of other goodies in it um, each month. They always have these pins. They're like huge enamel pins, like two inches. Um, and so I've just been kind of putting them up on my cork board, but I'm like, these are like way too cute to not, I don't know, like I need to do something with them. So I'll focus. There you go. Um, so I watched a tutorial I found on YouTube or somewhere online um, where you can make needle minders out of enable pins, which I was like, perfect. This is perfect. These are so cute and they're already flat and nice um, to work as a needle minder. So what you're supposed to do is on the back, let's see if I don't know how well this is going to come across, but on the back, this is where the pins were. And because they're so big, they always have two posts. So I just took a wire cutter and cut them as close to possi as possible to the back. Um, sometimes depending on the whoever the pin makers were, these can, you can almost like wiggle them and they'll just, the, the whole thing will pop off. Um, these are really well made and so I didn't think those things were coming off there I tried so I just clipped them as close as I could I still need to file them down they're a bit sharp um, but with the magnet on there so then I use the e6000 like heavy-duty glue glued a magnet on there and then I just used another magnet um, on the back of my fabric and because these magnets are thicker, it keeps um, it keeps this raised up off my fabric. So I was worried that these would start catching in like the linen and stuff. But to be honest, it keeps it up enough um, to where I have not had that problem, and I've been sliding it around. Um, but yeah, I, but eventually I will file those, file them down. So I made these two needle minders out of my Apple Crate pins. 
I have a whole bunch more. Um, I'm looking over here. My cork board is right behind my desk. So I've got so many more that I think just would make really great needle minders. Um, and why not? They're so easy. Checking my notes. And I think I want to jump into a bit of haul. Um, I will talk about the giveaway. Um, ooh, sorry. I'll talk about the giveaway in the haul as well. Um, and then I definitely want to talk about some of my upcoming plans and what I'm really hoping to work on, um, including some cross stitch charts that I'm just dying to start. Um, so first of all, as I mentioned, I got the Cozy Cafe Club kit from po Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Um, it's their little logo, their little card. Um, in the kit, you get all of the flosses that you need. I grabbed a needle minder that was made by a needle runs through it specifically for um, the stitch along. So it's a cute little chocolate macaroon. Um, they have all of these things separate outside of the kit too. So if you see something that you like, you can buy them individually. Um, but then it also comes with a holographic sticker. So cute. All of the beads, all of the floss. Um, it comes with a beading needle as well as tapestry needles. Um, and then the fabric, you had your choice of a 14 count, 14 count Ada, I think, or a linen. Um, I chose the Ada, and it is a, let me take it out. Yep, 14 count Ada, picture this plus uh, hand dyed fabric in the colorway opal, and it is 13 by 18. So it's this really very soft tan pink. That's something in my mouth. Almost like a taupe, but I love the modeling that it has from the hand dyed fabric. Um, which, as a hand dyer of yarn, you learn to love and respect the uniqueness of a hand dyed piece. Um, and I have definitely fallen in love with hand-dyed fabrics. So this is what I will be stitching the stitch along on. Um, I can't, I don't know for sure. I know that they were running, they ran out of kits pretty quickly. Um, but I do want to say that I believe... One, two, three stitch has the majority of all of the separate pieces that you would need if you want to join in and you want to get exactly, um, if you want to get like exactly what the kit offered. Um, they are getting more needle minders in stock. I did see that. I think there's like a wait list. You can add your email to that and then be notified when um, they get more needle minders in. Um, what else? Oh, they have a Facebook group, if you're unfamiliar, um, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery on Facebook. Um, there are a lot of people on there having conversations about what they've subbed for fabric. Um, if you can't find the opal by Picture This Plus anywhere, um, people are subbing it and like throwing out great um, options for stuff they found, where they found it, stuff like that. Um, I just so happened to be in the right place at the right time and so I could hop on and refresh real fast right before they updated and the kits went live so I did I was um, lucky enough to grab one but I know that there were many people that um, missed out and so I know that they're doing what they can to um, re-up all of their all of their stuff so they can offer more of those kits uh, but in the meantime definitely check out their Facebook group um, if you need some inspiration or some, some ideas to swap out. 
Um, so this, I believe, it starts, I want to say it was originally going to start March 10th, but I think um, a lot of the packages got lost in like, not lost, but they just like went into a void in California for a while. Mine for sure was almost a week late um, when it said that it would be delivered and then it just never, the tracking never said that it left California. Um, and then I ended up getting it, like the tracking never updated until it showed up in the mailbox. So I don't know what happened, um, but I know a lot of people are in that same position. And so the pumpkins um, were talking about potentially pushing off the beginning of the stitch along just to make sure that everyone's uh, kit arrives in time. Um, because whatever happened, um, they didn't want to start it and have people still waiting on, on their stuff. So I thought that was really nice of them. I'm not in any hurry to start this, to be honest, um, but I am really excited for when that time does come. Uh, oh, the kit, is, it's all uh, based on cafe and like drinks, non-alcoholic beverages. So their aesthetic is super cute. Everything has a little smiley face. Um, so I think from some of the uh, sneak peeks we've seen, there was a hot chocolate, like a hot cocoa, and there was a matcha. And so I'm like, yes, I, I am obsessed with drinks. So I have to do all of these, um, or I have to join in and make them all with their cute little faces. So I'll leave a link to their shop below if you wanna go on and check out and see what they have in stock and see the sneak peeks and all that good stuff. Um, And then I kind of mentioned becoming obsessed with <laughs> hand dyed fabric. So now I have quite the fabric haul. Um, this first few I did get from 123 Stitch and I got them all with specific projects in mind. Um, so this first one is an 18 count Ada in Mystic, which is a picture this plus hand dyed. So it's a really pretty deep blue deep blue Ada and I am still having trouble figuring out how how big I need to get fabric so right now as I'm buying fabric pieces for cross stitching I'm like getting them bigger because I feel like I'd rather have too big a piece of fabric rather than start something and it be too small so <laughs> everything I'm getting is like massive so this is 17 by 25 um, you know under the assumption that I can always trim it down here's another 17 by 25 18 count Ada picture this plus and this is jazz it's getting very blown out on camera but it's this really light tealy blue with just there we go I can see it a little better just little hints of purple. So again, I love the modeling of hand dyed. All the different colors come in. Oh my gosh. It's like speckles, but not. Uh, this one is a 16 count Ada, it's a 12 by 17 in the Mirage colorway if I picture this plus. So it's really pretty purple gray, almost like a stormy, like thunderstorm look. Again, I just thought it was really pretty. And then I just got um, some 16 count black, black Ada. So this is not, nothing special about it. It's just black. And I got these for the Chalk Talk series uh, by Hands On Design. And I just got a couple of those just to have. Um, I think last podcast I had shared that I have some fabric that I was going to use for that, but then I wanted to make sure that 
in the event that I thought that that was too light. I just had some black on hand. And then another thing, uh, some more fabric came in today. This, well, let me back up. I did a thing. As a hand dyer of yarn, I had to try my hand at dyeing some fabric. So I went out, I think to Walmart, and got some 14 count Ada and some 18 count Ada and tried uh, using my, <clears throat> the fiber reactive dyes that I have for dyeing yarn. Um, some of the acid dyes that I have only work on animal fibers. Um, but then some of them will also work on plant fibers. So the ones that work on plant fibers too would definitely work on Ada since it's cotton um, or linen. So I wanted to play around with some of the dyes that I have and just see what would happen. So this was definitely an experiment. Um, but it was fun. I made a little card just to toss on there to remind myself so I didn't forget. Um, with the size and the fabric type. Um, obviously there is no colorway because I was just playing, but uh, just a really pretty pink. And then in that same pan that I, I used in my dye pans, um, I put the 18 count Ada in there. So you can see I definitely could have done a better job with the modeling. This is definitely more solid or semi-solid um, than I was going for. But again, just playing, having fun, learning a new textile to dye on. Um, and I will either, I'm sure I will use them on some project somewhere. Um, but I also ordered some 18 count Lugana even weave um, with the intents of dyeing this. So. Um, this I purchased from Etsy. I'm covering up a coupon code here. Um, Sassy Stitch Boutique on Etsy. Um, they also hand dye fabric, so there's a lot of hand dyed on there. Um, but this is just white. Um, I got two 15 by 18s, one 20 by 30, which I have very specific plans for, um, and one 18 by 24 piece of 28 count Lugana even weave so yeah just I'm all in I am all in on the cross stitch train I blame all of you floss tubers I did receive one nitty haul um, I'll circle back to cross stitch in a bit because I want to share some charts that I purchased um, but I did receive a little bit of nitty haul and this is actually the first skein of yarn I think I've bought since before Christmas like that's how I don't know it's so weird for me to not be buying yarn <laughs> um, but I saw that teeny button studio was or has a Schitt's Creek monthly club and I'm obsessed with Schitt's Creek so I was like yeah I'm joining in I gotta I gotta see what this is um, so if you also are planning on receiving the Schitt's Creek Monthly Club from Teeny Button Studios and you have not yet received it, please look away. I don't want to spoil you, but I'm sure it's been plenty of time. Um, so this is Best Wishes, Warmest Regards. And it is the February 2021 Schitt's Creek Club. And I think it's so fun. So this is on their soft sock base, so it is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards for 100 grams, and it is going to, I took it, I unscanned it and looked at it, um, and scanned it back up, but it is definitely going to micro stripe between these browns and the undyed. Um, and surprise, this is going to be our giveaway for the episode. Um, while I love it, I love this. I think it's beautiful. I just, I have some similar, not exactly the same, but similar in my stash already. Um, and it just, it didn't spark anything in me when I got it. 
Um, that's not to say Teeny Button is a wonderful, um, wonderful dyer and I have a couple of their other skeins. Um, just right now, honestly, right now the only thing that's sparking any joy in me is cross stitch. But I wanted to join in the club, um, support another dyer and see what came out of it. Um, but because I don't want this to just go in my stash and sit forever and ever, I would rather share it with you guys and gift it to someone who is like super excited to knit it up right away. Um, so because of this, I am going to hold a giveaway on this episode and I will pick a winner the next time I record. And I want you guys to leave a comment down below um, on the YouTube video and in your comment somewhere use the word wishes. So you can tell me, you can use it in a sentence or you can just put the word wishes. I don't care. Or maybe you're commenting on something else and just want to tack wishes on the end. I don't care as long as your comment says wishes somewhere. That is what I will be searching for as I do the random comment generator to pick a winner uh, for the next episode. And then I will be sending out this skein of Teeny Button Studios to you. Um, open worldwide, I'll ship wherever. Um, just keep in mind that shipping is slightly crazy right now, so if I do ship it out of the U.S., um, obviously please be patient. Um, even if you're in the U.S., be patient. Apparently shipping is bonkers. Um, so yeah, I just think it's pretty, and I think it's too pretty to just sit in my stash and languish. I, like I said, I would love to share it with someone, um, and give my best wishes and warmest regards. Um, so yeah. So pretty. And check out Teeny Button Studio. Um, this is a monthly club, so I very well, I mean, I might join in for March. I don't know yet. Uh, but if you're interested in Schitt's Creek yarn, go check it out. Okay, just a little bit more. <clears throat> Thanks for sticking with me. Um, I have been completely obsessed with Autumn Lane Stitchery now for, well, the past few weeks, I guess. Um, they're a husband and wife duo, and they have really, really cute, uh, just, and fun cross-stitch charts um, and patterns. And actually, one thing, what drew me to them was their uh, deep, wrote it down. Their Dark Queen of the Sea stitch along that is happening right now. Um, if you check out the hashtag on Instagram, there are beautiful projects and I have been wanting to start this so bad, but I know I have so many other things that I want to do that I've been like pushing it off. But um, I think some of that fabric was I bought it with the intention of starting that so we'll see how quickly I get that started but um, then I also noticed that they have a floss tube and so I've been watching through those I started at the beginning um, and have really fallen in love with a lot of their other designs that they have um, so I did not well I did not get the dark queen of the sea I did end up getting Um, the Nomi Homie, which was one of their recent ones. I'll put better photos. Um, I'll insert better photos here. But look how cute he is. Just a little, little happy gnome. And this is small. Um, they are meant to be ornaments, I believe. Um, I also got, I'm zooming in so you guys, so I don't show off the chart below, but, um, they just released Mr. Finnegan for St. Patrick's Day. Look at his little face. I just think he is so cute. Um, a lot of floss tubers have done the Mrs. Claus, and I believe Mr. Claus was in a Just Cross Stitching magazine, um, as well as maybe a snowman. So there's Mrs. Claus, so I got her too. 
And then this I completely fell in love with. I, so a little bit about me, I have always really, really, uh, I don't know, I've always had a thing for um, Japanese culture and geishas and cherry blossom trees and um, the architecture and I just, I, it's always been a thing that's piqued my interest like my entire life growing up. Um, I have a cherry blossom tattoo um, <laughs> and Memoirs of a Geisha is one of my favorite books slash movies I think ever. Um, so when I saw this design I knew it was going to have to happen but this is Sakura and she's just a really pretty, pretty geisha design. Um, this fabric is stunning that they, that the model was stitched on. Um, and so that is what I plan to do with that 20 by 30 piece of fabric, um, piece of even weave that I, that I bought. I'm going to try to dye it up in a way that it looks similar to this. Um, if I fail, I fail, and then I'll just probably <laughs> reach out to, um, it's Picture This Plus, of course. Uh, it's a 32 count Belfast linen, and it's memory is the colorway of the fabric. Um, but I thought, you know, as it, I'm just playing, so I want to see if I can do something similar. Um, and like I said, if not, I'll just see if I can find it somewhere to purchase, but, um, She's stunning, and I want to start her soon, like sooner rather than later. Um, let me see. Nope, I thought maybe I had some sneak peeks of the Cozy Cafe in the intro, but I do not. Um, so I also got, obviously, the Cozy Cafe PDF download. Um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm really, I'm just smitten with cross stitch right now. It's just so relaxing to me. Um, I'm just so thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, oh, another thing, uh, the Love Gnomes was another one I wanted to share. And I actually, I downloaded an app called Readly, which I'm sure people have heard of before. Um, but it is a way to read magazines. Um, and Just Cross Stitching, or Just Cross Stitch, is one that's offered on this app. It is a paid for app, but you get the first 30 days for free. So I just wanted to check it out and see. Um, but I will likely continue to subscribe because there's a lot of magazines. I forgot how much I liked reading magazines. Um, but this was their. Uh, February edition, I think. And this is again by Autumn Lane Stitchery and this is the Lovely Gnomes. So I just think that they're, they are too cute. <laughs> um, so I am planning on starting those little guys too on probably some of that pink um, fabric that I dyed might, might look nice. So yeah, so cute. Um, another thing I've been dreaming about, uh, but did not make the leap, and again, still super intimidated, so it'll probably be months before I do this. Um, I, I saw a Heaven and Earth design called A Marvelous Garden, and I think it's beautiful. If I ever get to the point where I feel comfortable doing a full coverage piece, that one might have to be it. Um, I also took notes on some others as I was watching... Uh, other floss tubes and doing some searching around. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with. Sorry. Let's see. I'm kind of obsessed with Mirabilia's, but again, huge undertaking, super intimidated. I don't know. Um, but I really like the Baker's Wife and the October Opal Fairy because I'm an October baby. Fairy Flora and Miss Cherry Blossom, who is another geisha design. Um, along those same lines, I, while I was looking through Mirabilia's, I noticed that there were um, 
Bella Filipina. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I was looking through her designs as well and there's one that's beautiful that I really think I want to do soon and that is the Moon Goddess. Um, just so pretty and actually that's what I picked out some of that fabric for. Oh, as far as knitting is concerned, a new pattern that was kind of brought to my attention, it's not, I don't think it's a new pattern, it's new to me, um, is the Daily Jumper. Um, and this just looks like a really, really awesome sweater jumper pattern. Um, but this Daily Jumper is knit out of bulky yarn, so I feel like it would be a fairly quick project, yeah? I mean, bulky? It would be quick, right? I could like whip it up in a day. <laughs> Just kidding. A few other floss tubers that I, I mean, I have completely dove in headfirst into the floss tube world, so I have subscribed and watched so many of them. But some of my favorites so far, I really enjoy Autumn Lane Stitchery. Um, they are just too funny, like the couple, they just crack me up. I feel like I would definitely have beers um, with them. Um, X Stitch MD, who is Shiloh. I feel like everyone who ever watches Floss Tube knows about Shiloh. Um, but she is just, her projects are so beautiful. Um, and she is just, I don't know, she like glows when she talks. I wish I could glow when I talk, but um, she's just like a ray of sunshine, I guess. That is really weird if I'm not a person who says that, but um, she's really a joy to watch. And Darcy Cameron, who is Stitchman Darcy, oh my lanta, he is hysterical. I have binged the majority of his podcasts starting at the first. Um, oh my gosh, he is so, so funny. He does a ton, like all he does is full coverage pieces and he has made some incredible, incredible, like life goal setting cross stitches, uh, cross stitch projects. I will say if you watch him, he's not necessarily family friendly. Um, he curses, he drops some F-bombs, um, he makes some innuendos and jokes that are very adult, but I very much appreciate them and I laugh out loud every time I watch one of his podcasts or floss tubes. Um, another one that I really enjoy is Bumble Stitches, and she is based out of the UK, and she is just, she's so lovely, she, her voice is so soothing, her projects are so beautiful, and I just really feel like I'm sitting at her table with her as she is just going through all of her beautiful makes, and there's something just very appealing about her, and very friendly, and very open and warm, um, so I'm really enjoying her uh, floss tubes as well. And like I said, there are literally, there's so many. Evelyn Across the Pond is one um, that I know many people are watching now. Um, just, there's so many s inspiring floss tubers. And I needed, like, I didn't need this. Need is the wrong word. Um, you know, you start knitting and you're intimidated and inspired and awed by sock knitters. And like, I remember thinking, I will never ever knit a sock. I could never do that. Um, then I knit a sock and then I knit many more socks. And now I'm whipping out socks like it's no big deal. Um, so then it was sweaters like, oh, I will never get through a sweater. Those are such big projects. And I'm just in awe of the people that make sweaters. And then I knit sweaters. And so it's almost like... I, I was feeling less intimidated and awed by other um, knitting podcasters. That's not to say that their projects aren't beautiful and I still really enjoy seeing what everyone's working on. But that level of just being like my jaws on the floor, like holy cow, how did this person manage to make this? Like I, I've lost that a little bit in the knitting world because my skills have elevated. Um, so I feel like I got that back now watching Floss Tube because I'm just like, some of the stuff that these people are making are just mind blowing. And I say right now that I'll likely never do a heaven and earth design. And the day that I do one, it's going to be like knitting socks all over again. Like, I don't know, it's just crazy to me. And I love being inspired by the community and seeing 
what people are, can accomplish themselves with their hands. Like, oh, anyway. So I've been I'm really excited to dive into the floss tube world and just get re-inspired and reinvigorated and just astonished, really. Uh, a little bit of a shop update. I wanted to mention here, I've already mentioned on Instagram um, and I believe on Facebook, but uh, shop updates are going to probably be a little few and far between uh, for the foreseeable future just because I feel like I've lost my creative mojo, um, my creative spark and inspiration for yarn dyeing. I'm assuming that it's all due to the fact that we are in a pandemic and the weather has been complete and utter crap and the days have been dark and dreary and um, I'm just kind of gotten into a funk. Um, I'm hoping that with the warmer weather and spring coming and flowers blooming and trees getting some color, like I hope that that inspiration will come back. Um, but for right now, I just, instead of forcing myself to create new colorways that I'm really just not feeling deep down, it seems not fake, but not as real to me as I would want my business to be. I want to be, I want to have fun. I want to be inspired. I want to love the things I'm creating so I can then turn around and share them all with you. I just don't feel like I'm at that place right now. Um, so when inspiration hits, I will absolutely be heading straight to the dye pots. However, that inspiration, <laughs> I've been searching for it and it just isn't quite there. Um, so I am not going to be doing large updates probably for a little while. Like I said, inspiration hits, I hit the dye pots, I come up with some batches I really like, I will absolutely put them up in the shop for sale. Um, Clubs are still going to continue as normal. Clubs are about the only thing that I'm finding inspiring right now because I have a set theme to them. Um, so I don't have to go searching for the inspiration, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> um, so clubs are still going as normal. I just have shipped out the second of the Glint and Glitter Club. Um, so that was February's colorway. There is one more month of that in March um, that was a prepay option um, as well as a pay by the month option. Um, <clears throat> so if you'd still like to get in on March, you can do so by ordering that through the shop before March 15th and you'll definitely get that. Um, and I have just opened up another club and that is the Throne of Glass Club, which is a continuation of a club that I started last year and did three months worth of and then um, holidays hit. So I really wanted to bring it back and continue with the Throne of Glass Club because I am a huge fan of that book series and I felt like I needed to continue to do it justice by pulling out all of the beautiful imagery in my brain that came from the books um, and try to put them down on yarn. So that is open right now. That will remain open through March or until the club spots sell out. Um, and then the first skeins will go out um, end of March, early April, likely. Um, so that is open and available, and I'm really excited for that because I was just completely blown away by what I created for the first three months of that. Um, I will also say, on that note, the first three months, they will have to be recreated a little bit because I didn't write down all of the recipes, but... Um, I will be bringing them back as shop regulars once I get back into the habit of dyeing regularly again. Um, there are examples of the first three skeins on the shop listing in the shop, so if you want to look at those, they are there. Um, I have not yet decided if the Glint and Glitter Club is going to continue in uh, or for the next quarter or if I'm going to alternate it with the Throne of Glass or run them simultaneously. Um, if you feel strongly either way, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your feedback. Um, but for now, I've got a club going, um, currently still open for March. And then again, uh, Throne of Glass Club opened and will remain open through March for the next three months. So April, May, June, uh, you'll receive a package for those. My camera hates me today. The battery keeps dying on me. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, um, yes, clubs are open. Um, I did throw up some skeins of yarn in the shop that are very spring-like. It is La Vie and Rose, and that is a new colorway that 
I did, I was inspired to create. Um, those are up in a small quantity for right now, but I will be dyeing them up uh, on other bases as well and getting those into the shop in the next week or so. Um, what else? I think just because my camera is so angry with me and now I'm holding it in my hand and this just is turning into one of those, I've talked long enough. I've shared so many things and I'm just happy to be back chatting with you guys. I'm happy that you've taken the time to spend with me and hear about my projects and um, the amount of people that I got responding to my new cross stitch rabbit hole on the last video. Um, thank you to all of you that were so supportive of that um, because it doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. It's a thing. It's going to continue being a thing and right now I'm loving it. It's bringing me so much joy. Um, if you want to be entered to win that skein of Schitt's Creek yarn from Teeny Button Studio, make sure you leave a comment below with the word wishes, W-I-S-H-E-S, -E somewhere in your comment, um, and I will be doing a random draw for those and filtering them out by, um, by people that have used that word. So make sure if you want that, you use the word. Um, and then I will announce the winner at the beginning of the next episode. I also have another die with me video coming out. It will be out Friday morning, I believe is what I set it for. And that is uh, dying up that second um, skein from the Glint and Glitter Club. So I didn't want to put it out too soon and spoil the surprise for people that might still be waiting on their packages. But by Friday, everyone should have received theirs. Hopefully, I'll double check before it posts. But um, if you want just a behind the scenes sneak peek at how I dyed that up and the little goodie that came with it and all of that good stuff, uh, look for that video on Friday. But otherwise, I will leave you guys there. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week and I hope wherever you are, you have sunshine and you can get outside and enjoy, enjoy the weather. We all need fresh air and sunshine. Just happy thoughts and good moods. Um, so anyway, I will chat with you guys next time. 